Hey, it's me, Big P, and uh, I'm here to show you the current version of the Ice Crash Raider that a league started Harvest League with. Um, the build has come together very nicely and provides a unique playstyle that's surprisingly strong for the amount of investment I've put in. I've gotten a little bit lucky with drops and um, was able to kind of craft a decent enough sword but uh, the build's far from over. There's still a lot of upgrades we can make. I just thought I would put together a somewhat definitive uh, version of the build guide so you can have a reference um, to see exactly what I did and why. Um, there are a number of things that are different from my earlier videos because you kind of had to find out the intricacies of the crash. And um, the build is very customizable overall. <laughs> So anything I'm doing, you can change for yourself. The build is also very SSF friendly. Um, it might be best to uh, consider that you might want to do it this league because crafting and harvest is very accessible, more so than ever before. Um, you have an unprecedented amount of crafts available to you um, from an early stage, which really did help a lot with the build. I'm not sure how great it would feel without it, but... Um, Doing two-hander dice crash is, you know, a choice in itself. You can go dual wield still. You can go uh, with one hand weapon and a shield. There's a lot of choices to be made, and I'm going to explain some of the ones that I did after we show you the clear in a map. Um, we're a tier eight, nine maps right about now. Um, and clear speed is not really an issue. I kind of went for more consistency. Oh, by the way, I have a custom loot filter now that shows the colors of the uh, seeds, which I really like. It's a little thing. I just figured I'd do it kind of early because I knew it would just kind of help for you mentally to know. You know. The glance value of the seeds is helpful. So the one thing about Ice Crash, it's quite fast, but... Um, there's a bit of a rhythm to the build. There's a couple of moving parts. And as you can see, I'm using a blade storm. I'll go into the utility setup I currently have for it. Not totally necessary. I just think that as I'm getting into higher map tiers, sometimes I feel like the elemental resistances are really kind of a stopgap for our damage. But uh, you don't have to use it if you don't want. Just clearing with pure ice crash. Um, in sand stance and then moving to blood stance when we're like here I want to see if I can get some good boss damage The tier 8 boss got our molten shell up Really would like to not die here visibility. I gotta say with the ice crash is a bit of an issue but um, that's okay because the build effectively is pretty tanky, actually. Way more tanky than I thought a raider would be. So not the uh, best single target damage there if you have to move around a lot. See it kind of him slamming into the same thing a bit. But the curse we have is Frostbite. And uh, when you're in sand stance, it's cursed on hit with the uh, blade storm I'm using. And this helps us conserve our uh, exerted attacks. Because what will happen is it will kind of feel bad to use the really strong ice crashes on uh, like trash mobs and stuff like that. Not that Bladestorm can really clear, honestly. It just gives you something to do that will effectively reduce resistances pretty quickly. I'll show you the exact setup I have and kind of the ideal way to use it while you're mapping. I will go into the details of like engagements specifically, like how you start a map, because there is a bit of downtime to the build. Um, but overall it feels fast um, when it needs to be and satisfying enough that I don't really mind all the downsides considering my gear is really not that great um, it's been able to carry me pretty far so having frostbite is pretty important I guess this map's pretty much done so you, it's it's a very straightforward build um, 
Ice Crash. Let's go into specifically the way I have my attacks set up. So there's a number of things that I'm doing here that you might choose not to do. Um, you know, just pick your poison. There's a lot of supports that Ice Crash will work with. I actually did swap off the Fist of War support just because um, the inconsistency was kind of getting to... It's, it's not really necessary. The extra AoE um, on some slam skills, it might be way better. But uh, Ice Crash has huge AoE, um, as you can see. That's Sand Stance. Um, it is <clears throat> kind of important to note that there are one, two, three stages of Ice Crash, and each uh, subsequent stage deals less damage, like a lot less damage. So you really do want to try and hit the rear with this first chunk here, if not the second, and the third will not kill it you know like it's you can kind of see there's some inconsistencies to the build so if that's not to your play style that's okay but i have dash and phasing on the um, reader ascendancy which helps us kind of get into the position that we need you kind of do have to reposition a lot in this build um which i don't really mind but there's some more like full covering screen covering uh things like tectonic slam for example or even stuff like earthquake Sunder has more range. We're not ranged, you know, like we're still a melee build even with this huge clear. So that, um, you know, we've kind of had to build defensively around that and um, work with that. But anyway, <clears throat> you got a nice crash, fortify, just to keep us tanky, and it's just a more melee damage multiplier. Cold pen started to become necessary as we go into yellow maps and definitely in red maps. Um, there's not a lot of ways to penetrate cold resistance, um, so just putting it in the links is pretty solid. Um, I'm using energy leech support. I saw some other dude on PoE Ninja try it. And um, that's only really because I'm using a soul tether. And because if you look at leech on the tree, at least in the area we're in, physical attack damage leech says life. Even though we are doing a bit of physical damage with our blade storm, which is not fully converted. We did spec out of Winter Spirit there, so that, you know, we are just using Ice Crash as it is converted by itself. Um, that's physical attack damage. Um, this wheel is a little out of the way for us. We could go into here if you like, um, for just this little bit of life and mana leech if you like. Um, I'm mana leeching here, just because that was better on the tree. Uh, you can go into here if you like, but uh, the Soul Tether, um, they actually made it so that it's... Now its own little thing, Immortal Ambition. Basically, it gives you constant leech, um, keeps your leech up so that this 36% um, more damage while leeching is uh, working pretty much constantly. And then you're also, of course, leeching Energy Shield, which helps for effective tankiness. I actually do have a very respectable life pool for a raider. Um, and then, of course, added cold damage. There's just a bunch of flat cold damage on top. This may, you may be able to swap this out. Um, I'm leveling hypothermia, LE damage with attacks, just a couple other things I think I would probably use in the six link. But um, as a five link right now, it's been pretty solid. Uh, my blade storm is in a four link here with blade storm, curse on hit, frostbite, and multi strike. So the idea behind this is when you use your seismic cry, which is on my left click because I have it at instant. Um, you don't want to just immediately slam all these away, just on whatever, because there is going to be a little bit of downtime. Uh, even with second wind, you're not going to have 100% uptime on this. You know, like it's pretty slow now, um, but when you have your onslaught in the map and everything else going. Um, you'll use it pretty quickly and then you'll it'll kind of feel bad especially when you're in sand stance so what blade storm does is you can actually put it in like three different directions right that used to work <laughs> maybe I'm <laughs> maybe I'm making that up I thought you could like kind of um, spread it around because then you'll have uh, more coverage for the frostbite um, but either way, it just kind of gives us something to do um, while we like wait for like a pack to like line up properly. That sounds really bad. I guess you're kind of just throw one down, throw one down, cancel it to get the curse off, and then slam, just so that you're not 
constantly wasting slams, which does feel a little clunky. There is a bit of a learning curve here in uh, how to play it. Um, Ancestral Protector, of course, is just, that's pretty standard for melee builds. I'm not really going to explain that. Um, I'm choosing to use Dash because um, if we used Leap Slam, we would have to spec into the combat control, which apparently is a little bugged or something. I don't know. I just prefer Dash anyway. I fell in love with Dash last league. Um, it's pretty solid. Um, but yeah, Soul Tether's not necessary. I got pretty lucky with the drop. I thought it would be super expensive, but it's only like 4 Chaos right now. 4 or 5 Chaos. Um, so if you're in trade league, you can pick one of these up, which is pretty nice. I gotta say, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, but again, not necessary. Uh, again, and also not necessary is Duress of Defiance. Um, a rare crafted chest is probably going to be best in slot for this build that you're going to put your um, Ice Crash into. Um, I guess another thing worth noting is that I have gone all the way up into Resolute Technique. So... What I was doing before was precision as one of my auras, and then I was expecting to hear for um, the accuracy, expecting to hear for more accuracy, and went up here for accuracy. And even with all those three nodes and the level like 15, 16 precision, I was getting to 98% chance to hit as I was pushing into maps. So I figured for right now, as I'm leveling and maybe even beyond, uh, Resolute Technique is just, it just makes more sense. You don't want to miss an Ice Crash. There's nothing that feels worse than doing this big chunky attack and having it do nothing and just whiff. It's terrible. So I would say this is kind of a priority almost. Like the build, I kind of rushed down here, snagged this, came down, got this for some damage, and then went all the way here just so we were in the right part of the tree. You can rush this because Seismic Cry is super nice to have. I guess you don't have it like immediately, so you know, just pass by it, and then when you do get it, you can pick it up. But going into Resolute Technique kind of early, it's not really necessary. You probably want to go into here and here first, because stuff's not going to be evading in the first couple acts anyway. But uh, yeah, what other skill tree choices we have made? So I suspect out of definitely not Impaler, Iron Reflexes I was in. But I realized that it was kind of better to have a hybrid defensive setup. Oh, um, don't mind my resistances. I had a better belt, but then a soul tether drop, and I'm like, okay, we're just gonna use this instead. Um, the endurance charges we get from Dereza's caps are cold, I guess, but we are gonna need cold um, when we do go wise oak in the flash slot. We're gonna need that max because that's a lot of cold damage and an okay bit of some other elemental damages too. What else should we go over? I really want to make this kind of a more consistent video where I go over everything, but you know, I'm going to miss something. It's Series Promise is nice for conversion builds. Um, just pick it up early, get a lot of damage when you're in maps. My flasks are actually total crap. Um, increased evasion rating, I guess, is nice for us now because we are kind of an evasion build, but it's really not necessary. Um, and my Basalt, I would prefer if this was a Granite. I just haven't gotten one yet. I don't want to, like, buy one. Or, you know, like, it's, it's, you're going to get one eventually, right? Like, it has to drop eventually. That'll help for our Molten Shell that is on cast from damage taken. This one is actually probably a bit too high. Um, 18, this is almost 3,000 damage. But um, between, like, the dodge and stuff like that, it, it feels okay. You saw I got a little low in that boss fight. Um, damage over time is not really mitigated well um, for this build right now. But uh, I did go arrow dancing, if not just because we are still melee, technically, even with all the coverage, like I said before. Um, it just seems like something that makes sense to pick up. I've never really used this, so I don't know if this is like totally gimping the uh, evade that I have from... Rapid Assault, and Avatar of the Chase, and then this too. I really don't know how all this evade and dodge and all that shit works. So, depending on what your gear is, it might be worth it to go into acro and phase acro. Um, but currently, I think it's just better to have a bit of beefy armor, and then also the chance to evade. Um, yeah, my resistances are scuffed while I'm leveling. I'm actually going into Diamond Skin here. And I have cloth and chain, but once you upgrade your gear, I just want I, I just like the damage on like things like this. It doesn't really do much for my resistances, but I don't care. Um, and then this is like kind of crappy too, you know. I put yeah. 
the boots I bought um, because I wanted more move speed and I needed some int. But I actually ended up... I really only need the int for this setup specifically that I'm using and the energy leech. And even then, it's like barely giving us enough. Uh, I, I was specking into hard knocks for a time. You know, if you're using any blue support gems, you probably will need to. We are not in the end part of the tree at all. And uh, yeah, you just fill this out as you need. That really just helps um, overall survivability. And uh, especially once you get into soul tether where you can gain life as extra energy shield, which will help you effective tank be effectively tanky. Um, my jewels are total crap. I, I did have a good one, though. This one's kind of nice. Blind on hit with the tax is a little bit cool. It's a really low chance, but um, with something like Bladestorm down, I mean, Bladestorm will blind if you have Flesh and Stone, so maybe you can fit that in the build instead of Herald of Ice and Hatred that I have. But again, there's a lot of little customizable things you can do. I just like the flat damage to sword attacks that we have here. Uh, increased accuracy rating is worthless, but... You know, we're still going to be working on crafting the gems. I'm going to have the socket here and maybe even up here um, to work with. Maybe I should even go into here for resistances right now because uh, Sentinel wouldn't be totally worthless on our build. But uh, yeah, overall, the only real upgrades we can make that are meaningful would be linking our sword and or chest and getting a better sword. This one has <clears throat> 533 DPS, but it was self-crafted. I kind of just was throwing it at Harvest for a while, um, and yeah, Harvest with the way it works is pretty nice. You can get some really cool stuff. Um, obviously, the poison doesn't really have anything to do with their build, so if I can annul that and then maybe slam something else, that would be even crazier, but uh, yeah, it's not really necessary. Everything else, you can, this is a very SSF-friendly build. As long as you don't mind keeping your eye out for things like two-handers, you know. Um, and again, you don't have to use two-handers. I just wanted to try it because they buffed a lot of the base damage type. And I think that's, I think that's generally, like, the design philosophy behind these re reworked slam skills is a huge front-loaded damage that will basically clear a pack and only take a couple more hits to kill a rare. Obviously, you want to be one-shotting a rare by the end of it, but. You know, we're still working on the damage there. Um, something to note about the Raider Ascendancy and the choices I've made so far. So, 10% chance to gain Onslaught on 10 seconds when you hit, and gain Onslaught for 10 seconds on kill. You might notice that it's looking a little clunky in the hideout. That's because our Ascendancy does not work until we kill one mob. So, like, let me, let me show you in Blood Aqueducts what I mean. It's going to feel super bad if you try and start with Bladestorm. You know, Bladestorm is definitely, you know, a secondary skill um, that you don't really need. I'm not even using Blood Rage anymore just because I didn't want to. But now you see how much faster and better. Now you have the phasing and the move speed and the onslaught and all that good stuff. So if you are going to use the setup I currently have, please, when you walk up to the first mob, just tap them with the thing so you turn your ascendancy on because literally none of this is working if you don't have onslaught um so well i guess the chance the, the flat chance to dodge but innovate but just just please because it's it's felt so bad I, i've had deaths in maps where i just walk up to somebody and just do this well i guess blood aqueducts is a bad um example but it's you just need to turn the ascendancy on, please. You want your ascendancy to work. Um, I don't know what else to really go over, I guess. Um, looking forward, I'm going to just keep trying to craft on an Infernal Sword. And uh, eventually, we might be able to get into Cluster Jewels and then spec out of some uh, of Resolute Technique. Unfortunately, we'll have to drop stuff like Barbarism and Juggernaut, probably for more damage but that's after we get good gear you can't just throw crit on a build anymore i don't think feasibly um especially because we're in the strength side of the tree not really in this like you know you don't get a lot of the crit stuff here like heart seeker and then all the way up here you would probably go for the crit build um again there's a lot of ways to customize i think for as far as a league starter goes resolute technique is the way to go and just get into this two-handed part of the tree or even if you're one hand a lot of the part of the tree is here 
And like I showed in my earlier videos, if you want to do a sword, sword nodes here, here. Again, these are crit. Um, this one could be cool, though. I should probably do this. Although accuracy rating with swords is kind of a waste on me right now, but... <clears throat> could be some relevant damage, I guess. Uh, and then if you want to do an axe, axe has some weird ones that don't, they're, they're, like, you can use rage if you want here, um, you know, crit multi, and then like they have like impale with axe too, they've kind of thrown into it, axe seems like a bit more like a physical damage type, um, like the elemental damage maybe doesn't work so well with us, but, um, kind of rambling on here, I'm trying to think. Uh, what else we can do in terms of flasks that I'm looking to get um, Fortunately, we don't really use a cinder swallow urn because uh, we have onslaught on the build so instead I would probably be slotting in a Taste of hate which I haven't actually checked the price of there It's kind of out of favor right now So you can probably pick one up cheap if you're in trade league and then of course a wise oak to help with the end game penetration obviously you will need cold maxed Luckily, I don't think this will be the sort of build where you need to triple balance it. That's, that's like super annoying whenever I have to do that. Like I'm already, as you can see, having enough trouble with resistances. So yeah, cold maxed so that you're penetrating with that. Um, but yeah, beyond that, that's the Ice Crash Raider. It's uh, you know had some some growth, and it's been just been like a super satisfying way to level. And I'm kind of really pleased with how it's been so far. And I'm hoping that we can start taking on a lot of the in-game bosses. Con it's been killing conquerors and stuff. I guess um, another thing I want to go over is defensively. Um, the build has a couple of layers um, in the, built into the attack itself. So there's chill, which slows stuff down. Freeze, we do freeze a lot. And then stun, I think, works separately from freeze. So all of these things can add up to, to get you like that extra second to get that extra attack out, even against like a boss. So it's not, it, you know, it's not like a super tangible layer of defense, like a Vol Molten Shell, which we are using. I mean, we're using Vol Ward Chief. I guess I didn't finish going over the links. Sloppy video. Um, dash, Second Wind, and Seismic Cry. That can be a three link. I'm just leveling this hypothermia here. I'm just being lazy. So lazy that even in my offhand, it's just a three link, even though it's a two-hander. Um, but uh, Herald of Ice, you can link with some other stuff if you don't want to use Blood and Sand, which I don't think is really necessary. I just, you can choose to not use Blood and Sand. It just makes kind of sense for an area damage build. My Vol War Chief is with Melee Fizz, because that's just where it is. Um, that's not a link. Uh, what do we have? Hatred there and Blood and Sand. You can maybe put these three in an Enlighten, probably, eventually. Um, you know, if you don't want to use this setup, you can fit it in there. Again, there's a lot of choices you have to make. Um, I'm pretty much not telling you anything in terms of gearing. You can do this solo self found with all this sort of gear that you find. You just have to know what to look for for whatever you're specifically doing. So I'm going to upload the tree. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, you can stop by the stream today. I'll be streaming all day. I hope I've had some computer issues with streaming, but um, I swapped um, back off the Vulcan to, uh, what was it, DirectX 11 or whatever, the other render. Anyway, yeah, none of that has anything to do with Ice Crash Raider. So thanks for watching. Um, leave a like or a follow, you know, hit me up if you have any questions. I've already had some people come in the stream and see the growth of the build and it actually looks a little bit different than what they were looking at. Hopefully they didn't do the other stuff and now have to spec into the stuff I'm doing now, but you know, it's not that big a deal as long as you're in this part of the tree and like to slam the build will work. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I look forward to making a lot of build guides this season. Uh, it's a really good leak. I'm liking it a lot. Might even do a show, just to show off my garden. I might do a separate video for that just because that's the sort of thing that I like to do. So yeah, bye.